Maybe I'm Casey, maybe I'm Casey, maybe I'm not. Stink, thank you for joining us again. Yeah, really my appreciate pleasure. it. It's always good to be on. You've been uh, you've been busy, you've done the car wash today, so you've been on like every show, right? Did you Undisputed? Uh, uh, no, I did not do Undisputed today. Okay. I got, they were too busy for me, apparently. So I was supposed to be on today. But... Oh, well, let's just sleep in a little bit. No, I'm on my radio show, so I was oh, here. At, right. I was here at, at 4 a.m. this morning. That's right. Yeah, I don't. I don't have those hours anymore. Yeah, I am that, but I'm that old. So that's you know. You get up at four, uh, oh, like regularly, even oh, when you every, don't have to work. Every day, I'm in the four o'clock hour. I'm feet are on the floor. To do what? Like if you're not working. I to drink coffee. Like, and like stare at the sunrise or oh you know i do a devotional every day and then i always have something to do so I, but i just wake up you get to uh, you get to an age where you just wake up like you get excited about like i get excited being on the road getting in the sheets by myself that's exciting right i got the whole <laughs> bed to myself i can kick the covers up i don't have to argue with anybody like i got space right that's exciting to me okay you get to an age where stuff like that's exciting what time do you go to sleep Oh, 8.30, 9 o'clock. God, that sounds so good. That, oh. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm in my underpants and <laughs> cold sheets. So this good. is awesome. Uh, yeah. I, I don't go to sleep that early anymore, but I do. I still get probably the same amount of sleep. I'm not into the sleeping alone thing, though. So that's an old person thing? No offense. No, no, I mean, well, yeah. When, <laughs> no, no, I mean, like when you have the whole bed to yourself, that's kind of exciting, right? No. No? No, I'm a cuddler. Are you? Yeah. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. All right. um, so you have covered a couple games for sure. Fox. You were at the Arizona uh, Lions game. Yes, I was. Which was a thriller that ended in a tie. How do you uh, feel about ties? I hate ties. Uh, yeah. There. I mean, it's not ideal. It's not an ideal way to end it. Like I would much rather end it so I could catch a flight. Usually, you know, you anytime you roll into overtime and you're calling a game, you're like, really? Can you guys get your? <laughs> Done, Even if it's together. like an exciting game that goes into overtime. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, but you're uh, there's there's a point where you start going. You're in the middle of the game. This is this is horrible. But you're in the middle of the game. And you start looking at your. You start packing stuff like in breaks. You're like packing up some of your stuff <laughs> that you don't need. You know, and you're like, okay, hope somebody you know ends this thing. And then you start checking your watch because you're like, shoot, I got a flight here in an hour, an hour, right. an hour and fifteen hour. You know, so yeah, you because everybody like they call it the escape when you do a game. So as soon as the game's done, like I always, with about two minutes left during the, the TV timeouts, I'm packing my stuff up so my thing, like my bag is packed, right? right? And then, bam, we bust out of there. We run to the elevators, go down to the trucks. Everybody, Everybody's stuff is loaded in a car, and we've got a police escort outside. Right. And so you jump in the car. Everybody goes, hey, great game, great, great game. Boom, you're off to the airport because everybody schedules their flight. Like if the game is supposed to be three hours. You always think, okay, it's going to go a little bit longer, maybe three hours and 15 minutes or whatever. So at that point, you go, okay, what's the closest flight I can get without totally stressing myself out? It's like a game. Yeah, like, it this sounds is like the a game within like the pure game. adrenaline. Right, it is. You're adrenaline junkie. You're like, do I have pre-TSA? Let's get on this thing. Where's my clear? Let's roll, right? And so you're flying out, and then it just depends. Like sometimes I'm the guy that's in the bathroom too. Like if I have enough time, I'm in the guy in the bathroom, in the men's room, just to, like, and everybody's walking in, I'm standing in my underpants. No socks, just standing there like, hey, how you doing? Because I take my suit off. I don't want to travel home in my suit. Oh, at the airport? At the airport. I have no idea where you were doing this. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, okay. No, not in the middle of the I'm airport, not, but I'm the guy. So, you know, stadium. it's shocking when you see me standing there in my so, under. Wait, Stink, come on. You don't dis you don't go in the stall? You just change in the middle of the bathroom like a yeah. child? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just like a like a kid. So people, you know, people walk you know, into the airport bathroom. You, you could you could possibly, if you're a well traveled person, could possibly walk into the men's bathroom at said airport and see you in your underpants. In my underpants, no shirt I mean, on, and ever... I am yoked. By the way, I'm just absolutely yoked. Do you, I'm like I, a hold little on. kid. Do you leave your you socks on, in... or you have your bare feet on these bathroom floors. No, I I either stand on top of my tennis shoes that I'm about to put on okay. to put my socks on. Yeah. But it's not like I'm standing in front of the urinal naked with you no know, shoes on, right? Like, have you ever seen a person in the in the airplane? I mean, you're People never in the sans underpants, but right? But go into the bathroom with the what's that? You're not you 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 don't change the underpants, also, right? No, no, no. Just I'm right. in my underpants. Not that it makes it any less weird. It's still 100 percent weird. But yeah, but yeah, like it's sometimes like a, guys level. guys walk in. I'm just standing there with shirtless, just in my underpants. Like, I hey. don't know what I would do if I walked into a women's restroom and somebody's just and in their a panties? woman was just in there in her underpants. Yeah, I'm not into weird stuff at airports or airplanes. 
I'm ready to go hands on at all moments. So any right. weird stuff is like it's available. I strike you. Do you ever see? <laughs> right. So if I see a woman, in a, I'm gonna have a lot. I'm gonna have questions immediately. I have to evaluate the situation and see how crazy this is about to get. I always because fighting like, naked people not fun. Right, but you see people. People are weird. Like people travel or weird. Like I watch. I've watched people go into the the uh, bathroom on an airplane. I'm on an airplane every week, right. multiple times a week, in their socks or with bare feet. So I always leave a little urine on the floor of every to of every. <laughs> I do. I just just for the person that goes in with their with their socks on or bare feet. I always leave a little bit. That's my urine on your feet. It's like marking your territory. Just up. for just for those people that do that. Or the guy who wears a tank top. Nobody wants to see your yeah. nasty armpits on the plane. I, I'm kind What's of. I, I'm not with the urine on the floor thing. It's super gross. It's sterile. But it's. <laughs> it is. The the people who wear shorts, like your butt, it's on the seat. There's been really thousands like, of butts on like, the seat. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like people who wear open-toed shoes. Yeah. No, I don't want to see your feet. It's not even about seeing of the feet. It's the smelling of the feet. It's the fact I have to see your toe hair and the jam. I'm really out on feet and toenails to begin with, I'm or like any out, form of nail. Um, if I'm I just, see a nail clipping, I might throw up. Like I saw a instant... dude clipping his toenails on the plane just um, just <gasps> not more than six weeks ago, no! clipping would... his nasty ass toenails. I'm in jail on the plane. I'm in jail for show. I'm in jail. <laughs> I'm definitely uh, in jail. What uh, did you do? Uh, was... <laughs> uh, uh, like, were, you clo were you close to him? I was on the opposite side, and he's like, he's just big no! old nasty. Wait, I. Don't believe Grizzly, no I've got way. pictures on my phone. There's no way. I have got. Dude, oh, there's really? No way. There's no way. Okay, He's well, let me just show you because it's on, on my Instagram airplane. right now. Hold on, let What's me just the get to this. What's the person next to him doing? Uh, I'm vomiting. I guess I don't know what the person. Named. It was the. Hold on, oh, just man. hang with me for a minute I'm because like sweating. That's so gross. It, Did you say something to him? No, I was on the other thing, but I was just like, like oh, what, you got it. What do you mean you were on that? You were, so was, you were on the same aisle. No, the, he was op like a seat ahead of me or whatever, and I was back here on this seat. Okay, but just think, what if one of those clippings does a little a little fling thing, as toenails tend to do? Yeah, if the toenail hit me, then I would probably have to say something about it, but I was just so disgusted by it. Oh. <sighs> I've seen, I've seen that, but I've seen multiple people cut their fingernails on a plane. I mean, you're just cutting. You, you can't cut your, you can't cut your fingernails or nails in public. That's something you do in your own home and your right. own bathroom. And then you make a point to make sure that you get rid of all of them. I can't even see a clipped fingernail, let alone be in the presence of someone. Right. If they got, you should just plane. stick your finger. If you're a seatmate, just stick your finger. Pull a big booger out and just wipe it over on his area. Like, I don't, that's what you should do. I can't do. say on. Uh, maybe not. You know, that's maybe a little I extreme. can't say on wax I what thought. I would do to someone if they were sitting next to me and started clipping their toenails. What's the most yes. disgusting th thing one of your teammates has done on a plane? Well, I don't, you know, on a plane, I don't know. We we actually paid a guy. I'm not going to give you a name, but we paid a guy. So we have one guy on our team that just produced the most immense boogers like you could ever <laughs> imagine. Oh my God. And he would work it. So it'd be like one eye would shut and he'd be like knee deep in his nose. And then he just like really carefully and he'd have this <laughs> like it'd have a vein. It'd have its own Ew! like it have its own spine and central nervous system. Like he'd pull a booger out like that big. So we paid a guy to eat the other dude's booger. Shut up! Oh yeah, yeah. And it only took like we we raised it was I don't I think it was less than a hundred bucks. And it was one of the most disgusting things. <laughs> Although <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, I mean, it was this thing, had a, t a heartbeat. Who seen, ate it? I'm not going to give you the names of the, what team? of the, when I was with Denver. Was he on the offensive line? Look at you, just, you're just digging for information. I just need to know what position, it matters. Yeah. All right, so speaking of offensive lines, I do have uh, a few football questions Okay, for you. good. Okay, so you've seen the clip in the fourth quarter, down 10, the Eagles offensive line just decided they were going to all retire at the same time. Mm, and then yeah, I have seen that. Called. Yeah. What happened there? Um, well, again, this is this goes to me to the way you're coaching your football team. So they rush three, so you get double teams on the edge, and you got you know three guys or four guys blocking one guy. And what ends up happening is you're figuring that ball has to be gone after about four four and a half seconds. And so they basically just I call it playing with a body clock. Thousand one, thousand two, thousand three. That ball is gone, and it wasn't. And they just quit playing. And so I put that, like, it should never happen. But there's an old saying in the NFL or any 
any sport in general is you're either coaching that or you're allowing that to happen. And so I look back on that coaching staff and say, what are you guys teaching these guys? Why did all those guys basically just say, okay, our, our body clock says that that ball should be gone. And it wasn't gone. And so like that to me is the, it's inexcusable. I get it. But now as, as an organization, like everybody wants to now point the finger at Carson Wentz, say Carson Wentz isn't any good, right? And there were seven drops in that game. Yeah. If all seven of those balls are caught, he's at 72 completion right. percentage. He, he threw two more touchdowns. Like there's a lot you can look at and say, as a team, this isn't good enough. But it's the easiest thing in the world to do is point to Carson Wentz and say, oh, he sucks. You well, know? I don't think Carson Wentz sucks, but I do, no. think, I do think he should fight his entire offensive line. You think they should should? Yeah. I mean got destroyed. Have you ever let have you ever let it looks like they let him got hit get hit. No, no, they just they just thought the ball was gone. That's they they are So it's technically Carson Wentz's fault for not throwing it. No, I mean it's not Carson Wentz's fault. Like I, I would say I would say this. If you can hold it for six seconds and one of your receivers can't shake open, then your receivers suck. Like there's a there's a there, you know, I mean, there's a lot of different every sack has a story. There's a story to be told, right? <laughs> and it's not always, hey, your offensive line sucks, or hey, your quarterback can't, holds it too long. There's a story behind every one of those. And in a in a team situation, every one of those sacks, there's somebody to blame. And when you roll through, like uh, I've been a part of an offensive line that you know you'll you'll get you'll get however many sacks you give up during a game, and not one of them is credited to one of the offensive line. It's credited to a quarterback. It's credited to a tight end. It's credited to a running back. It's credited to to coverage. So there's always like there's there's more to it than meets the eye. Than just all them yeah. deciding to stop working. Right. What do you make of Cleveland's offensive line? Well, I mean, I think I don't think they've played well. But again, this is a Cleveland Brown a Cleveland Browns issue in general. Like I think it's much easier to deal with. Like it's much easy, easier to deal with failure. The human condition says that it's easier to deal with failure than it is success, because when you have success, it's really easy to pat yourself on the back and tell you how good you are, right? right? And I think I look at the Cleveland Browns, and I was really concerned about them rolling into this year because why? Because they were everybody's darling. They're supposed to win this, and you know Baker Mayfield's the greatest quarterback in the history of the game, and we just got Odell Beckham Jr. and man, we're going to be so dynamic and um, and. Like, that's not how it works. Like, everybody's really talented. Obviously, some teams are more talented than others, but this is still the ultimate team game. And it's about everybody working together and understanding the value of everybody else. And if you don't, you know, I always, I always kind of compare it to marriage. Marriage isn't a 50-50 proposition. It's a 100-100 proposition. If I'm not giving 100% of myself to you and you're not giving 100% of yourself to me, then it's not going to work. It's not a 50-50 let's keep tabs on who's doing what. And same with a great football team. you got to be willing to sacrifice 100% of yourself for your team. And if you're not, then your team is not going to be as good as it could be. And so, you know, you look at the way they're constructed and, you know, everybody is into – I mean, you know, Odell Beckham Jr. comes on and introduces himself as – what did he introduce himself as? I'm him. A, I'm him. Yeah, I'm him. What does that mean? I'm him? I mean – Or No, I think he said I'm the one or I'm – I think he said I'm him. I'm him? He said like, did he say Odell, I'm him? Yeah. Something like that? What, what does that mean? Well, I mean, Od Odell, is a, Odell is a different dude. Like, Odell is about – uh, his swag right. and right. personality. So and what is I? I'm. But that was you, the question. Have any with, idea that was what the that question means? with the Browns the whole time. Right. Like what? What are they going to be? I'm him. What does that mean? I'm him. The one who ain't won. Sh is that? The, is that? The I'm him. I mean, he hasn't won. Sh you're right about that. Okay. Well, okay. you're defending him. I'm not defending him at all. I just I think that the Browns in general have a lot of problems, and it's correct. Like everything's kind of getting hey, lumped see, on whatever come, you feel like, listen, like you want to put it on. Listen. Do you see this? Common ground, you and I. Yeah. We, we, we agree on, on a lot of we're things. We're on common ground right now. Like, you really want to find that picture. I do. I'm just <laughs> thumbing through this. <laughs> right, it's driving me crazy <laughs> right now. I'll find it for you later. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm putting it away now. Look, I'll turn it upside down. Thank you.
Okay, no longer exists. That's all good. What uh, you so every, you were at the Lions Cardinals game, which is how we spiraled into you being in your underwear and bur- boogers. Right. What what am I supposed to make of Kyler Murray? I think Kyler Murray's an interesting cat. He's a, I mean, he, I think one, um, he's always had a chip on his shoulder because of of you know five foot nine and a half or five foot ten, whatever he measured out to be, right? So I think there's always been this: you're not going to be good enough, or you're not going to be big enough, or you're not going to be whatever enough, and. So I think he plays with an incredible chip on his shoulder. Um, he's accurate. He's dynamic. He has got an attitude of I really don't give a crap what you think, which I think there's there's power in that. Um, you know, it's kind of the old uh, wolves don't concern themselves with the opinion of sheep, and he's got plenty of that in him. So I think that's exciting. I think ultimately, though, you look at the way you uh, – again, this is NFL football, and it's different than, than college football – is that form of offense and what they do kind of more spread and, and you know, the way they, they're in shotgun 90-whatever percent of the time, is that sustainable in today's NFL? And my thought process is no. But, again, I'm old. And so, like, I, I don't buy – I don't buy into that. Remember, like – when Chip Kelly came into the league and was going to set the league on fire, right, and he was going to revolutionize the league, and I was mm-hmm. totally like, this is never going to work. And they went 10-6, and six, I think, the first year, and everybody was like, I told you so. And I'm like, no, you didn't tell me, squat, because this ain't going to work. Like, magic milkshakes are not going to make your team good. Um, and uh, eventually, what ends up happening is there's this battle of attrition that goes on. So I broke it down, the number of plays that the defense had to play on average – if you average is, you know, 65 plays a game, if you're averaging 75 or 80 that you have to defend, by the end of the first quarter of the season, the first four games of the season, you've essentially p- played five games. So in a 16-game season, because the way that offense operates, you have to play 20 games on defense. Mm. And there's just not enough players. Yeah. You just don't have a big enough roster. So the complementary nature of football says it's an unsustainable format. And I look at the same thing. You know, they got into a, a goal line situation. They ran seven offensive linemen in the game because they don't have tight ends and they don't carry fullbacks. You know, they're, that, that's what they are. And now all of a sudden I got a 325-pound offensive lineman running the back line of the end zone going, look, I'm open, you know. And I'm like, no, you're not. You're fat, right? I mean, that's just the way it works. Right. So, you know, I, it, to me there's a bit of a gimmick yeah, and it's, it. that's kind of how I've I've felt about it too. It's not I'm always rooting for the new thing to kind of take a little hold. Right. I, but I also think like as far as the offenses and and Kyler Murray's size and Baker and it's like the NFL in general is at this this I don't know what the word is, but uh, th- there's some confusion as to what the prototypical quarterback should be because the way the draft's been going, you've got Baker, you've got Kyler, sure. and, and it's like these. It's trending towards smaller skill, and then everyone's out on Cam Newton. But then the guys who are still being consistent and winning are kind of on the on the bigger side. So what is it? What is the answer? Yeah. Well, I think I think the answer in the NFL. I think that there's a couple things that change. Obviously, you don't have a wide side of the field. The hashes are together, right? So you can't just outrun everybody to the wide side right. of the field. And so when you get into those formations, the three-by-one or the two-by-two, two, you don't have a big side of the field where you have more space. It's it, The field's the same width, but it's condensed because everything's played in the middle of the field. Right. So there's a there's a difference in, in the way the field's constructed. Um, obviously, you don't have as many players to choose from. And so it's hard to operate that way because of just the condensed number of players you have on your roster. So all those things. Here's the other thing that, that to me, it makes it really hard. When you run everything out of shotgun, so when everything's behind the line of scrimmage, you eliminate, let's just call it, I don't know the exact number, but let's call it 40% of your run plays you eliminate. And it's really hard. It's it's really becomes difficult to tie um, play action. What makes – offense is really good and dangerous um, is when your run game is completely married to your play action game and they look identical. It's hard to do that at a shotgun. The other thing that happens to you in shotgun runs is offensive linemen. When you think about this, if I'm running a ball from underneath center, you snap it to me, quarterback turns, the running back is already running toward him, right? And you hand it off. There's a mesh point there, a couple yards behind the line of scrimmage. Right. 
And now you're attacking the line of scrimmage. When you run out of shotgun, I got to wait for the snap. I got to have you by my side, and then I hand you the ball. And then you're still five yards behind the line of scrimmage. <laughs> right. So that mesh point takes longer. Well, we're not developing offensive linemen in this league that can block people. I mean, it, because of the college system. So now you're saying, hey, we we're deficient as offensive linemen. We haven't worked on the skill of playing because we've eliminated contact from a, a contact sport because we're so afraid of the narrative that's been created by everybody outside of football that, right. oh, it's dangerous and, you know, you're going to freak out and get CTE. Like, like, that's the narrative that we've allowed to be established from people outside our league, which is bullshit. But we've let it happen, right? And now, all of a sudden, when you hand that off, you're, you're handing it off, and you're five yards behind the line of scrimmage, and there's an extra second and a half that you have to have unskilled players as offensive linemen because they haven't been allowed to work on their craft. You have to allow them to block for a second and a half longer. Well, guess what? They can't. And the, and the defensive players on the other side of the field are so much more gifted. Right. So, like – there, like, there's so many reasons I get into why I don't think it'll work. So I'm like the rest of you, though. Let, let let's see. I mean, let's sit yeah, and I mean, watch what it's, happens. It's premature. And I'm not, but... again, I'm not like I like the kid, you know, and and I want everybody to have success. I just have certain beliefs that go. I don't think it's going to happen, but you know, I'm willing to watch. Something else I didn't think was going to happen was the Bills being good. And they look pretty impressive through the first three games. So am I wrong on the Bills? Because I really don't – I don't really believe in Josh Allen like that. Well, I don't – I think jo – here's the thing about Josh Allen. I think that Josh Allen, one, I think the whole accuracy thing coming out, like it's real to a point, but have you ever been to Laramie, Wyoming? Um, no, can't say that I have. Right. Um, and, you know, don't book it anytime soon. Sorry, <laughs> Wyoming folks. But, like, I went there – so – I went there to film this thing right after I retired for National Geographic. Okay. Okay. Um, it, that's a whole other story. They compared me to a dinosaur, and they have a big I don't dinosaur. Think that's a compliment. Yeah, they have a big dinosaur in in their museum library thing, right? And it's pretty cool. So, I go to the airport. It's seventy five degrees in Denver. It's like a beautiful May day, and my flight gets canceled because of wind advisories in Laramie. So it's about a two and a half hour drive. So I'm talking to the national. I go, I'll just drive. It's fine. I'll just drive up there. Right. Jump in my truck. I drive up to Laramie. I get out of my truck and it's 38 degrees and freaking blowing sideways. Like the wind. Con it's like a big wind tunnel. It's it should be it's, Laramie, Wyoming should be a science experiment is what it should be. <laughs> um, so one like. I think it's really hard to recruit guys to come up there and say, hey, you want to come to Laramie and catch the ball as a wide receiver? You're like, mm, no, I don't. Right. I'd rather go anywhere else. And it's probably hard to throw in that as well. Yeah, and I think the environment. And then plus, you know, their coaching system or their, their philosophy, they ran a system that was more pro style where it's more five and seven step drops and really driving the ball down the football field as opposed to, you know, the college game that we see today where it's all about throwing eight bubble screens and a couple other, you know, a couple other swing passes. And, and next thing you know, you're 20 for 20, you know, before you even start the game. So um, that said, Josh Allen's an incredible athlete. He's got a big time arm. I think there are some accuracy issues. But they make up for those the way they play the game. They are physical. They are nasty. They control the lines of scrimmage, and their defense is outstanding. So that's how they're going to win. That said, Patriots will go up there and beat them by 20. You yeah. know, that's just the way it works. That is how it works. So when they pitched you on the dinosaur thing, yeah. you, were, you weren't, like, offended? I think if some, if they were like, we want to compare you to, like, a, a raptor or T Rex. Yeah, I could get so behind that. that. Kinda, that was, yeah, that was what well, it was. Which, which, well, well the what whole, dinosaur the whole, it is matters. Right. Yeah. The, the whole pro, the whole principle of that was that that this particular dinosaur died from an injury. Like it's like the T Rex. It's like the the alpha male dinosaur, the the big hunter or whatever. Right. But the whole point was the battle of attrition that is playing in the NFL and how injuries will like eventually end your career yeah these minor things in this particular dinosaur they speculated that a toe infection actually killed this dinosaur like it got to the point where it could not defend itself anymore and then all the little raptors ate it or whatever it was you know toe infection what yeah. but so was it a fierce dinosaur or it was like a hippo dinosaur no like... no it was like a it was like a t-rex oh 
Was yeah. it a T-Rex or was it like a T-Rex? Well, it was one of those that was T-Rexy. It was a T-Rex. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it was a it was a badass dinosaur. Yeah, little short, little but it arms had the like short that. arms. Yeah, short arms. Yeah, T-Rexes. Big legs. I mean, you know. Yeah, it was something like that. It had to know. it had to evolve. It didn't it didn't make right. it. All right, so the toe infection got it. What's the worst injury you've had? Because you have had a lot of. You've had how many surgeries? Twenty nine. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's stupid. I can't. I, I'm not a big surgery person. Um, I tore my ACL and that ended my soccer career forever. Right. Um, and now I do the elliptical and yoga. And that was one ACL injury. So uh -huh. 29 injuries. Uh -huh. What's the worst one you've ever had? Well, I like the ACL was like I tore my ACL in college and I actually tore it in the third quarter and played the rest of the game on a torn ACL. And it was exceptionally painful when I tore it. And I limped off the sideline and kind of just caught my breath and then went back out and played. And then um, then I got really hammered. And then I um, I woke up the next day and was like literally – I couldn't get out of bed. So, you know, you knew you did something really bad. Right. Um, and that was that was incredibly painful. And the surgery back then was – you know, the, you, they used to say you do more damage fixing it than you did yeah, hurting it. Yeah, right? I don't even understand how that made sense. So yeah. When you look at – like you have a whole – you have the whole slice – on your knee? Oh, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Mine is like a th like three little dots. They used to cut open your whole leg. Yeah, they used to cut your whole leg open. And so, yeah, I mean, those, I, I've had a bunch of like six microfracture surgeries because I don't have, so like you have the cartilage pads in, in your knee, right? The, right. the shock absorbing, those are all gone in my knee because I've torn them all out. And so then your bone is covered with uh, a, a, what they call articular cartilage. So it's the covering of the bone. So it'd be like if this table, if this was a formica, formica table, you take the formica off and expose the wood. Right. And so microfractures, they go in there and drill holes into the bone and try to scar over all that articular cartilage that's gone. So if you look at my knee... I've actually got a picture of my x-rays on my knee. Somewhere in that phone. Wait a minute. I could probably find this one. Hold on. Time out. Time out. I think I can find this one. Hold on. I'm going to show you. This is, that's, there's a picture of, of my left knee. You see that, you can see the screws in it and you can see where there's no space in it. Yeah, it doesn't, I'm not a doctor. Right. But that doesn't look good. But if you played one on TV, you'd say your knee is messed up. You'd say, uh, Mr. Schlereth. Yes. Um, yeah. That's, so, that, those, so you have two screws. How'd they get the one like right in the middle? I don't know. That's the that's an ACL deal. Ugh. So, what do you think of so Gronk? Obviously, there's Andrew Luck just retired, mm -hmm. which uh, I don't know your opinion of, but like I don't have any problem with that if he feels like he can't play everything right. that you're talking yeah. about. It's traumatizing even listening to, let right. alone actually having to experience it. Uh, Gronk obviously had a ton of injuries, yeah. and he was talking about the other day and was talking about CBD oil. So, what do you think about if the the NFL eventually moving into the legalizing marijuana and CBD treatments for, for players. Obviously, eventually it's going to be legal around the country. Right. But do you think that the NFL will adapt it? I think the NBA will eventually get there sooner than I, the NFL. You know, I, I think I think eventually they will. Um, I don't know why they wouldn't. I, I just think it's, I think it's ridiculous if there is information out there and it can help guys, then I don't see what, I don't see what the holdup is. And it's legal in you know, multiple states, I don't understand why they wouldn't use that as an alternative as opposed to alcohol and opiates and all that. Well, yeah, as opposed to, like, like, taking a handful of right. Vicodin before you walk out on the field. Where yeah. are you this week? Are you are you doing a game this week? Yeah, I've got uh, I've got Seattle at Arizona, so I'm back on the Kyler Murray uh, train. That's, a, that's an interesting game because Kyler Murray is continuously compared to Russell Wilson, which I think I think Russell Wilson is the most disrespected uh, quarterback probably ever. Because he's Why? he's great and he does not get enough credit for how good he really is. He is a he's he's a you know he is one of those guys and I love this about him. He is a um, he happens to be an exceptional. He's a he's a great quarterback who happens to be an exceptional athlete. And right. a lot of the problem with college football nowadays is they take exceptional athletes and they, they try to make them into quarterbacks. Yeah. He's a quarterback first that happens to be an exceptionally gifted athlete. And I don't think they've I don't think they've done a great job outside of supporting him. You know, O line, receivers, all that stuff. That's kind of why we've gotten to see what a great right. athlete he is. And he's he's incredible. He's he's uh I love Russell Will. He's such an old soul type of guy. When you talk to him, he just is like he's so just low-key unless he's doing a video for sierra and then he's really low-key 
He's super low key on this. I mean, he changes his voice. You don't, you don't, you, you don't know who Lizzo is, so you're probably not, you're not probably not paying attention to the, the Instagram videos. No, it's okay. Well, we'll check that game out. All right. Thank you for joining us and for uh, just as a note, just mm -hmm. maybe toss like a light robe in your bag when you're traveling, so you don't have to flash everybody in the bathroom at the airport. Listen, you know what? When you got it, you flaunt it. Okay. Well, looking's for free. Touch is gonna <laughs> cost you. Thank you, Stan. You got it. <laughs>